Sounds so smart like you graduated college. Why is this like literally just not worth it? This is Professor Asia May and welcome to my channel. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Asia May and thank you so much for joining me again today. For those of you that are new here, I talk all things business, personal finance, and entrepreneurship here on my channel. If you guys find anything interesting, fun, or informative about this video, please go ahead, hit the like button. It really does mean a lot to help grow the channel. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm, which pretty much means YouTube sees that people find this video interesting and they want to go ahead and put it in front of a larger audience. I want to go ahead and continue on with talking to you guys about college. Every video is going to be about a different topic about college, whether it be student loans, personal finance and budgeting with college, whatever the case is, I want to be the one-stop shop where you go for college advice. Today, we're going to be talking about the real reason we go to college. Academics. I know that class registration is going to be around the corner for a lot of you guys, so let's go ahead and get into the video. Tip number one is so simple, and I can't believe I have to say this. Go to class. I'm going to put my glasses on for this. Go to class. You would be surprised, especially because it's so much different from high school. In high school, everyone cares if you show up. If you're not in class when you're supposed to be in class, you're marked as tardy. If you're marked as tardy, then more than likely the front office is going to be calling your parents. You only realistically are going to be in class for a couple hours each day. That's nothing. It's not even like you're being there for like a full-time job, eight hours a day. You only have to go to class for a couple hours a day. It's not the funnest thing in the world, but sometimes, especially when you get into higher level classes and you're going into more concentration specific classes, it's going to be a lot more fun for you. Enjoy it. Go with your friends have a lunch plan after just go to class I don't care how you get there if you have to scooter there if you have to take the train if you know ride a horse I don't really care because everything just starts with you showing up <music> tip number two is to plan out course registration this is such a big Thing. Especially if you're an underclassman, you are going to be the bottom priority when it comes to classes and chances are you're not going to get into your top classes. So it's always so important to have different alternatives that are right behind it. So this is kind of can be in like two parts that I kind of want to talk about. First thing is going to be plan out your courses, do your research on your professors, do your research on the class itself, talk to your other peers who have taken the class already, understand what the professor's style is like, the projects are going to be like, how many exams, how difficult are the exams. Another thing that's going to go along with doing your research beforehand is go on Rate My Professor. Oh, Oh my god, literally Rate My Professor is so helpful. I can honestly say that 90% of the reviews that I've seen on there have been more than accurate for the teachers that I've had. Of course it's going to be people that are like, this professor was the evilest person in the world. But you know what, at the end of the day, people are going to have their biases, whether they like a professor, if they had a bad experience with them especially. Always ask people within your major, especially if it's a major specific class, what their experience has been. And also, always double check on Rate My Professor, especially with newer professors. A lot of people that you know might not have had them already, but other people on Rate My Professor are going to go ahead, leave their commentary and reviews for a professor on there. So another thing in terms of planning out your course registration, I can't remember exactly what website it was, but I'm going to ask my friends and I'm going to put it in the description link down below. This scheduling website that I used for my classes. So it was a third party website. It had nothing to do with my university, but literally everyone at my university used it. And so what it pretty much allows you to do is look up the, the serial number. Is that what it is? Class registration number. I guess. So pretty much it allows you to look up what class you're looking for. It shows you how many seats are available, the class name. It does have everything that shows you into a block schedule. So you're able to visualize your classes and plan everything out. You can see, okay, from 8 a.m. until 9.15, I have class. Then I have a break until 1.30. I start class back up again. And you're able to visualize everything. It allows you to plan out secondary classes. So you always have a plan B in case you don't get your ideal class. It's always important just in case you don't get into that class, you're not stuck and like looking around like, I don't know what else to take because then all the other classes that you might have wanted to get into and probably could have would have been filled up by then. When it comes to course registration, go exactly at your specified times. I don't care if you are in a different class, leave that class, talk to your professor before that class and say, hey, by the way, I have course registration at this time and I really need to get my classes and more than likely your professors are gonna understand. Have a nice, safe, good area. Make sure you have Wi-Fi because the last thing you want is to not have Wi-Fi on course registration and everything is gone. Not bitter. Tip number three. 
three is going to be sync your calendar to your Google Calendar or your iPhone calendar or whatever the calendar that you frequently use. I know that different student portals like Blackboard and Canvas both have good options in terms of just syncing, synchronizing. In terms of synchronizing your academic calendar with your Google or Apple calendar. I can't speak to Androids. I don't have an Android. But if you do, I'm sure that they have an option for you for that as well. Make sure to sync up your academic calendar. That way, you know exactly when assignments are due. You know exactly what's coming up. And you can quickly just look and take a glance. It's really just helpful for you guys in order to keep organized. Know exactly when things are going to be popping up. Because you're going to have so many things that you want to do in college. Whether it's you have to go to work. If you want to hang out with your friends. Even if you're doing a little social distance darty. You know, daytime darty already has mass suit and everything you still need to get your assignments in also a big thing that I like to do is always print out your syllabus let's be real though we're always on our phones we're not always looking at our calendars definitely just take the extra quick second print out your syllabus always try to be preparing yourself and at the very least you can at least act and feel like you did try to keep organized give it the good old college try another kind of small thing with this is that a lot of my friends did is that they would actually take a screenshot photo of their academic calendars and have that as their screen background that is so helpful, especially when it comes to the first couple of weeks of school. You will always forget where you're going. Tip number four, I want to kind of sneak in here. Continuing your education outside of the classroom. So I know that it can be a lot with classes and everything. You constantly have something to do for different classes, group projects, exams, homework assignments. Even if it's 30 minutes a day just watching YouTube videos on the stock market or budgeting or Roth IRAs or maybe something that's in your field if you're into accounting, looking up different things in accounting. Maybe you're just reading books, getting through biggerpockets.com or maybe you're watching people like Graham Stephan. It's going to be help furthering you and oftentimes, like, I'm not gonna lie, I feel as though a lot of the things that I'm doing now with my life, I learned a lot from YouTube. There's so much information that is out there. Put it in the search engine, beep, boop, beep, bop. It's all there for you. Just pick up a book, read, and if you're not gonna do that, watch a YouTube video. Tip number five is take advantage of office hours and TAs. You would be surprised how much your professor will love talking to you. A lot of the times, especially with professors with really big lectures, most students aren't going to take the time to go ahead, get to know them, reach out to them. Even if it's you going for maybe 30 minutes an hour each week, you're going to be at the top of that professor's mind. You're going to be someone that they recognize in a sea of faces. And when it comes to curves, you're more than likely going to be the person that they end up helping out. I'm not saying go out of your way to kiss butt for your professor just so you can get good grades, but genuinely come to them as someone who wants to learn more, and they're going to reciprocate that back. If they see that you're someone that's been there, that's consistent, they're more than likely going to want to help you when it comes to your grades at the end of the day. Another thing that kind of like loops into this, it's going to allow you to get leveraging room to negotiate for your grade. So maybe this was unique for me because I went to a business school, but I negotiated a lot of my grades with my teachers. There have been multiple multiple instances where maybe I had a B plus and it was bumped to an A minus, but that's going to be really beneficial for you in terms of letters of recommendation for jobs down the line. I actually have friends that were able to get co-ops and full-time job offers just because of connections that they made with their teachers. And then a lot of the time, a lot of your professors are really fun and actually really cool people. Also, don't underestimate the power of your TAs. Even though they're just students just like you and I, they were handpicked for a reason because they are really good at doing what they do. Your TAs are meant to be there and they're paid to be there to help you guys, so don't be shy utilize your TAs and I will say this for a lot of TAs they are the ones who are actually grading your papers even though it's nice to go in and get to know your professors the person who ends up giving you your grade is your TA so don't sleep on your TAs be nice to your TAs especially if it's a grad student teaching as an undergraduate TA a lot of them are really passionate about the subject because that's what they're majoring in take the time to get to know your TA go for coffee with them at the end of the day when it comes to crunch time for exams TAs are more than likely going to help the people who have consistently been there and asking them questions and have been nice to them as opposed to all the hundreds of other students who are coming in just to cram before the exam. Tip number six is going to be take advantage of any co-op or internship programs that you have at your school, especially in a time where the job market is going to be hyper competitive because of all the losses due to a certain virus. There's millions of students who graduate every single year from universities and you're not going to be someone that sticks out a lot if you just have grades. No one hires you because you have good grades. What's going to be make you more competitive in the real world is going to be experience. And I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of other students who do have job experience. Even when I was working at the Boston Consulting Group, I was able to sit in on some interviews as well as be a part of the decision-making process. A lot of the times the people who ended up getting the job 
were simply just people who had more experience and had the skill sets that we needed. Even though someone might have had a full GPA point higher, to be very honest with you guys, academic performance does not translate to being a good worker. Another thing with co-op programs is a lot of times they are prepping you ahead of time to go ahead and go into interviews. We had a whole one credit class specifically dedicated towards building our resume, getting everything ready, interview prep. We were ready to go into our first interview with a lot of confidence. Programs like this are really beneficial because it mirrors exactly the experience you're going to have in the real world. Tip number seven, our last tip is going to be take classes during the summer. Even if you just want to graduate early and get on with your life, or maybe you just want to get all of your hard classes out of the way, if you're not going to be doing an internship over the summer, definitely consider taking classes. A lot of universities will have class options for you online. Go back home, take your classes, save money on rent. For a lot of universities too, depending on how your university is, my university tends to be a lot more money hungry and that's all they really cared about. But a lot more universities either allow you to take online classes for a cheaper amount or at a local university or a community college and they allow those credits to transfer. Bring a friend of yours from high school, take the class together, it can be so fun. It's also less expensive, save your pocketbook a little bit of money, save your parents a little money, and save yourself from a little bit extra student loans. Taking summer classes in Boston was just so fun, especially after coming back from Spain and studying abroad, and then just going straight into taking summer classes was so chill. I met some of my best friends. I absolutely love the experience. That's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. The lighting is different the day is changing I just wanted to say thank you guys so much if you made it this far into the end of the video thank you thank you thank you so much and you guys please go ahead hit the like button it really does mean a lot to grow the channel if you guys want to see more from me please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below you just click just hit the notification bell so you know every time I post a new video every Monday and Thursday with that you guys that's gonna be it and see you next time